Greetings everyone and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me on this, the unboxing of the long-awaited Clint Eastwood, The Good and the Bad and the Ugly from Sideshow Collectibles. Um, long-awaited because I have been sat here waiting for it for a long, long time. It's finally arrived, finally going to get it in hand and unboxed. Just before we jump in though, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all the people who've subscribed to the channel, to all the people who viewed the videos that I've put up and the reviews. Uh, I'd just like to say a, a, a little, well, send a little apology, um, especially for the, the tour video that I put up recently and the poor picture quality on that. Uh, it's a fledgling channel, as I've mentioned before, and we're bound to experience a few hiccups. Um, one of those being uploading of some of the videos uh, wasn't as successful as it should have been. They were shot in 4K, but unfortunately they didn't turn out that way when they when they landed on YouTube. The tour video will be being reshot in uh, 4K HD. Uh, so if uh, if anybody would like to see it in a little bit more detail than uh, than the first one, that will be coming up shortly. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank you to everyone who's uh, supporting the channel and, uh, and has uh, subscribed. It means an awful lot to me. Huge shout out. So without further ado, let's jump in uh, and get down to unboxing Clint Eastwood. Okay, here's the man himself. Clint Eastwood, Blondie, as seen in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Fresh out of the box, straight onto the stand. Nothing done to him at all. Before we take a deep dive on, dive on the figure though, let's take a look at everything he comes with. Okay, so it's accessories time. What do you get with your Clint Eastwood figure? Well, first thing I was drawn to here is the poncho. So let's get this out of the bag and, uh, and take a look at it. Come out. The infamous poncho which does not look like that bag, well, there we go. And here it is. It's a lovely feeling material. Very, very nice. Uh, I know there's been some argument over the color of this poncho. Uh, some saying it's more green, some saying, ah, there you go, you see, it's double-sided. That is a very, very nice material. Very nice indeed. You've got the, the green coloration on that side, and over on the other side, the brown coloration, obviously the hole for the head there, the tassels, I, I'm going to chance my arm and say that this is, this is movie accurate, I'd have to go back and have a closer look, even though I've seen the film probably a hundred times, yes, that is very nice, very nice indeed, silky smooth, so we'll put that to one side, very, I'm actually preferring the job done on that to the job they did on the rifle, Moving on, a rock, a plastic rock. Now we all know what this is. This is the rock that uh, he writes the name of the grave that the money is allegedly buried in. Uncanone or Arch Stanton, whichever you prefer. Then we've got the hands. I actually believe, before I move on to the hands, I believe there's supposed to be a six scale pencil in here somewhere, but I've yet to find it. We'll come back to that. So, how have they done on the hands? Pretty good. Not bad. Not up to, say, caustic plastic standards, but still pretty good. There's multiple paint layers there. Some reddening on the knuckles, I'm sure you can possibly pick up there. On the, uh, on the knuckles of the hands. Fingers are pretty well done. There's some cuticle work there. Paint job's pretty good, yeah, yeah. That's okay. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and two on the figure. So that's a total of eight hands. Uh, let's have a look at a few more. Trigger hand. I'm assuming that's for the handgun. We've got a neutral sort of open hand, or maybe that's the hand for holding the rock. We'll find out later on. A fist. Uh, another semi-open hand. The, you can see these. Plenty of hands to go at. Lots and lots of hands to go at. That, uh, and the fact that they, they're all pegged as well, that's useful. Um, so yeah. Okay, that's the accessories out of the way. I will see if I can find the pencil. Uh, and let's cut to the figure itself. Okay, back to the man himself. 
Clint Eastwood Blondie uh, from The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Um, and yeah, I built, uh, this is actually part of a, a run, uh, the, the Clint Eastwood Legacy Collection. Um, I've got Dirty Harry on the way. There is also, I believe, uh, Clint Eastwood from The Pale Rider. There's Dirty Harry in the brown suit for the final, uh, the final scenes from the film. We've also got coming, I believe, an outlaw Josie Wales. Um, and there's a couple of quarter scale figures coming as well. But for the time being, let's focus on what we've got in front of us. Um, and uh, let's, take a look at, let's take a look at the tailoring first, what we've got going on with the tailoring. So the jeans are, um, are quite nice. I don't know whether they're a denim material, um, but they feel nice to the touch. Um, the boots, I don't know whether you can let's, uh, let's see if we can't just drop down on those boots a little bit there. I might have to go handheld at some point here. Um, yeah, it's not a sp split boot cut design, but I wouldn't expect that with uh, with a figure like this, not with cowboy boots on. The, uh, the spurs are plastic, but they move. Uh, and there are, we all know there are two kinds of spurs. There are those that come in through the door and there are those that come in through the window. I've uh, just got to say, uh, this base, Sideshow, uh, get a grip. Um, it's about time you started making some uh, uh, some diorama, even miniature, small scale diorama bases. What we've got here is the usual hexagonal base from Sideshow. And for some reason known only unto them, they've decided to print Clint Eastwood, the Legacy Collection, the Good, the Bad and the Ugly, on the bottom of the stand. Of course, we all display our figures standing on their heads. A very strange choice, but anyway, uh, the usual hexagonal base with the usual crotch grabber. Moving up from those jeans that we just talked about, we've got the shirt. Uh, just oops, this camera gimbal is not cooperating. Nice shirt, nicely tailored. Yeah, some just nice stitching on there. Yeah, looks good, looks uh, screen accurate. Um, the waistcoat, the all-important waistcoat, yeah, that feels nice. Fur-lined, I'm not sure what that material is, but it looks good. And I think that's actually screen accurate with the drop there, where it's not tied uh, perfectly straight at the bottom. Underneath that, we've got the, the belts. They are proper belts with proper, proper buckles. Uh, I don't think these are leather. They might be leather, actually. I have to get in and sniff. Um, they feel like leather. There's some nice work on the uh, on the detailing on the belt there. If you turn him around here, lift this up, you can see the gun belt has been nicely painted. Yeah, all the way around there with the bullets in. I don't think they're removable. I'm pretty certain they're not. No, they're they're moulded in there. But yeah, nice shirt, nice belt, that holster. Let's just lift that arm up and take a look. Yeah, it does actually feel like leather. I say, I will sniff later. Uh, let's bring him back round. And let's bring this camera up ever so slightly. Yeah. Sorry for the wobble there, okay. And upwards and onwards, or onwards and upwards even. And the necktie, yeah, we've got the necktie there. I did notice when I was taking him out the box, uh, and it's, it is a, it's a nice little touch if you I can bring him in a little bit there. You can see that the stubble effect is carried down onto the neck. Uh, rather, there's nothing worse than having a six scale figure that's supposed to have stubble uh, and it ends at uh, the, the where the, the head meets the neck. I'm not sure why they didn't just do a whole neck and head sculpt because there's no separate head with this, but yeah. Uh, mine is not to question why. We've got the stogie going on. I think we need to get in really, really close to see this head sculpt. I'm gonna go hands-free, so bear with me. So we're back hands-free, taking a closer look at the head sculpt. The hat itself is uh, doesn't come off. Uh, it's sculpted plastic and it's, on, it's not coming off. Uh, you can give it a go if you want. I wouldn't recommend it. The head sculpt, yes, I'm impressed. I like it. Um, the jawline's right. The eyes are very good, the fur and eyebrows, the paintwork is, is pretty good. It's, it's, in fact, it's very good, even down to the, the dimple there at the side of the nose, uh, and how the headlight the hairline sweeps back there. All very good, yeah. 
So far I'm impressed. They most certainly have captured the likeness of Clint Eastwood. 100% captured the likeness. Uh, perhaps the paintwork could be ever so slightly better, but perhaps that's just me being picky. Um, on the whole, I am very, very impressed. I'm very impressed indeed. Yeah. So let's uh, get some accessories on, get a pose, uh, and uh, see what he looks like all tooled up. Okay, so here we go. We've got him in a basic pose in the detolf. Uh, it took a little bit of time. To, to get that puncture, really, that's one of the one of the uh, uh, the finagling issues you're going to have with this is getting the right uh, getting the right look for that puncture. This is not right. Uh, as I said, this was just a quick pose. Uh, I was being a complete spoon when I mentioned the head sculpt uh, and having it as a solid head and neck because it needs to come off to get this poncho on. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I'm gonna to have to spend some time with this poncho finagling it. Um, I gave the sniff test to the uh, to, to the holster, and I still can't make up my mind whether it's leather or not. Uh, but this gives you a, a general idea of how this thing looks. Put some more lighting on there. Uh, the body, mm, yeah, it's sideshow and their bodies. Uh, I still think they could do a little bit better on the body. The articulation's good, but the body feels a little bit stiff and dare I say a little bit cheap uh, but on the whole I am very very impressed the head sculpt is top-notch let's, uh, let's get a close-up on there get some more light on it you look at those eyes they do glisten in the right light the accessories are good the tailoring is good uh, the base leaves a lot to be desired but that's always the case with Sideshow I'll be using a custom uh, desert base for this one yeah, if I had to give it a score, hmm, oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I'd give it a 7.5, maybe an 8 out of 10. Uh, it's let down by the body a little bit, and it's let down by that base. But on the whole, tailoring's good. Head sculpt, very, very good. Let's uh, zoom in again on that. That is a fantastic likeness of Clint Eastwood. I'm liking it more in the detail than under the, uh, uh, under the table lights. Yeah, those eyes in particular very very good so yeah a, seven, a solid 7.5 maybe an 8 on a good day uh, so there you have it the sideshow collectibles clint eastwood from the man with no name the good the bad and the ugly yeah so thank you for joining me all it remains for me to say is a, a big thanks to everybody who has uh, commented like subscribed hit the like button bang on that like button all you like uh, subscribe comment anything you like um yeah thanks for supporting the channel uh we've got the mars toys prank villain coming next uh and we're also expecting the companion piece to this uh, the dirty harry the sideshow dirty harry so they're reviews that are coming up soon thanks again for uh, for watching thanks again for supporting the channel look after yourselves and happy collecting